a few weeks ago I did a video on accelerator pumps and when talking about the nozzles I realized I didn't give quite enough information on it. So I'm going to talk about that really quickly, clear up some misconceptions and put my theory to the test. Let's get started. So one very common misconception about the nozzles in any carburetor, I guess the Holly or the Edelbrock is probably the two most popular, is that changing the size of the nozzle will give you a bigger shot of fuel. And that's just incorrect. The nozzles are not there to change the volume. The nozzles are there to change the rate. And I know that sounds a little odd because, hey, you're putting a bigger nozzle on there, you should be able to pump more fuel into it. But what that that's doing is the larger the diameter of the nozzle the shorter amount of duration it takes to drop that shot within the engine and that's what I want to look at today we're going to test that to see exactly what is discharge out of the nozzle on this Edelbrock carburetor and see exactly how much comes out now we'll talk a little bit about size of the accelerator pump and and position of the arm on the Edelbrock carburetor we'll go over all those little details because they do make a big difference when you're talking about the whole setup together but again the nozzles are very very I've heard it time and time and time again unfortunately I didn't cover this deep enough in the last video I did on accelerator pumps but I did want to talk about this today and kind of in a separate video is good because there's a little bit of information that needs to be shared here that's kind of technical and I want to talk about it separately uh, and then you can kind of watch the two videos together and get the full picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the bench and we're going to pull a carburetor out and we're going to actually test the volume of this. So let's go take a look at it. So as we mentioned, all carburetors have some sort of accelerator pump circuit. The Edelbrock has theirs up front here. The Holly Double Pumper is obviously famous for having the two. And then the Holly Vacuum Secondaries has a single accelerator pump. Now. What is that designed to do? As we mentioned in the other videos about the accelerator pumps, is just designed to give you a little bit more fuel to correct a very lean condition, or potentially a lean condition anyway, when you're going off of near idle, very, very low RPM, very, very low throttle, and snapping it open to wide open throttle. You need a bigger shot of fuel to get the engine running, to get the demand on the load that the engine is is commanding and getting enough fuel to it so you can quickly move through the circuit get into the main metering circuit and continue to build power one of the common things in tuning on an accelerator pump is to change the fuel or change the shot of fuel that goes in there now holly's got a lot of different ways to do that with the cams that are on there uh, different positions you can get, use uh, different uh, dimensions or sizes on the cams and we'll cover that at some point down the road but the Edelbrock one is what I want to concentrate on today and we'll show you a little bit of detail there. We've already talked a little bit about that about changing the position on there and how that gives you a little bit bigger shot of fuel but the question is is how much does the carburetor see when you change those positions that's what I want to talk about today because there's some really common misconceptions about it and there's a little bit of math involved we're not going to cover a lot of that but I want to show you exactly how much fuel the engine sees when that gets a shot of fuel so that's what we're going to test out today we're going to do it on a couple of different nozzles and I'll show you the setup here and how we're going to work that out so here's how we're going to test this we're going to use the Edelbrock carburetor and we're going to try two different nozzle sizes I'm going to try the smallest at a 24 and the largest at a 43. That way it gives us a pretty dramatic size and then we will test the volume that comes out of it. Now on the accelerator pump arm, I will probably go with the, with. I know I'll go with the top hole because that's the biggest shot, but I will probably just go to the smallest uh, or the furthest away uh, because I think just it's just going to give it a little more dramatic results and that's all we're looking for here. Uh, the middle hole, uh, I think it'll probably be a little bit closer. The, the result will probably be a little closer to what the top hole gives. But either way, it just it's just it'll save me a little bit of time going back and forth because it's a lot of nozzle changes. It's a lot of uh, carb top of the carburetor on and off, and it's going to take me a while to run this test. But I want to see the exact volume in CCs that come out of this thing, and I think it's going to be a good understanding of exactly 
how that test works or how the you know what the carburetor actually sees. But I'll we'll also talk about that here in just a quick second before we run the test. Uh, but anyway, that's the basics of it. I just like again, I want to get a good understanding of exactly what comes out of there. I've never run this test before. I've seen the math done on it before, so I know what that looks like but um, never done it real world. So you always learn something and I think we're gonna learn something here today. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the math behind it and, and kind of go over that really quickly. Okay, so let's talk about the CC sizes of these accelerator pumps because I think this is where the confusion starts. So do the Holly first, it's a little bit easier. So the primary on, I think most of their carburetors are a 30 cc for all their street carburetors. Maybe their race carburetors have a little bit bigger size. The rear, this one has a 50 cc pump on it. Those are the two sizes I think that they offer. They may offer other sizes, but I, those are the ones for sure. The Edelbrock is a fixed orifice. There is not a changeable pod that comes off of there how you change the volume of that is based on where the accelerator pump arm is and if it's at the hole closest to the pivot point it gives you a lot more cc's so here is where this becomes a little bit confusing the edelbrock carburetor has an adjustable volume of a cc for the accelerator pump where the hollies are fixed the edelbrock one based on where the position is of the accelerator pump rod will determine it. So if the math is correct, and I do believe it is, when it's the furthest away from the pump, or the, excuse me, the, the pivot point, that pump, that orifice, that size is rated at 25 cc's. A little bit smaller than the, than the factory, or a Holly one. In the middle position, you have about 31 cc's of volume that that pump is capable of putting out. When you're in the position closest to the pivot point, that is almost 40 cc's. The math works out to 39 cc's of volume. So again, that's where it makes this a little different in the Edelbrock is adjustable, the Holly is fixed, but I don't want to concentrate too much on that today, but it is it is part of understanding how much the carburetor is going to see potentially. And I think that's a good indication or a good place to start. But really what I want to know is how much the nozzle is is putting out. So we're going to change, t talk about it in a couple of different positions. Like I said, we're going to try, try it at the one closest to the pivot point and then the one furthest away, which is the leanest. And then we're going to measure the actual volume. Now, I already know by doing the math what that volume is going to be, but I'm going to test it out first, and then I'll show you the math and show you what it should rate out to be. But that volume that comes out of there should be fairly close. So that's what we're going to test. Okay, so the plan is I'm going to uh, fill up this with some mineral spirits. Mineral spirits, as we talked about in the past, is probably the best, uh, safest to use that's got the pretty close to the same uh, density as fuel. So that's what we'll use in, in the carburetor. And then we will push it through, uh, collect it down at the bottom, and then I will record the results. Now we're gonna use the O24 and the O43 nozzle, and I will uh, uh, get the CC and the weight with both. Uh, and we'll do that in the top position and the bottom position on the uh, uh, accelerator pump arm. So I'm gonna get to testing and uh, we'll come back at the end with the results.
Okay, before we get to the results, I want to talk about some really, really critical things to understand about this, and it's one of the big reasons why I did this test. Let's talk about the nozzle size. The nozzle size itself has no bearing, none, on how much fuel or how much volume is delivered into the carburetor. When you have a smaller number, like this is a 24, that just means the duration of that shot of fuel takes longer. Smaller orifice, it takes a little bit more time to push the fuel through it. That's what the nozzle size means. It is not there saying that it's going to give you a bigger shot of fuel. Same on the Holly. It's the exact same principle. These don't vary by carburetor. The 43 that's in this carburetor right now, it doesn't mean it gives it a bigger shot of fuel. It just means it delivers it quickly. And that is the key to this whole thing is... I wanted to test what that volume actually was. So before we get to the results, it's really important to understand that because I think that's one of the most misunderstood things about the nozzle size on any of these carburetors that you put a bigger number in, it must mean I'm gonna get a bigger shot of fuel. And that's further from the truth. Think of the nozzle size from here on out as a dimension of time. The smaller the number means a longer time. The bigger the number means it's going to be shorter a time. It will deliver the shot of fuel from the accelerator pump much quicker. Now here's the other thing about the CC volume of these pumps. It is not rated on a, a 30 cc's is not, if that's what the volume is of this, and, and we talked a little bit about that, that at the closest pivot point that this is about 39 cc's, it doesn't mean when you step on the gas that it delivers 39 cc's of fuel through the nozzle. No, what that is, it is a measurement and a capacity of the volume after 10 strokes of the accelerator, meaning that you're going to give, well, probably three, maybe a little less cc's every shot. That's how much is actually going into the engine. And if it's a 30 cc pump, typically after the 10 shots, it doesn't deliver a full 30 cc's. It's actually much less than that. That I don't know. I would have to talk to the actual an engineer to help explain that to me to get some better understanding of it. But that principle is pretty well founded. That science behind it, for however reason that they rate it that way, is always the same, whether it's an Edelbrock Holly, I think it probably bleeds over into Quadrajet. It's the number of, or how much fuel actually gets into the engine uh, based on 10 of those shots. So those are two really huge pieces to understanding this. And quite honestly, I think of it that way as well too. When I pick up a, you know, a 43 and I'm going to replace a, a 28 that's in the carburetor, my mind automatically thinks, well, it's just going to be a bigger shot of fuel. No, it's not. It just delivers it quicker. So it may feel like it's a bigger shot of fuel. Now, when would you need that drag racing application? Somewhere where you got a little bit more aggressive cam, you're trying to slam open the throttle from a idle or right off the converter to flash it to get where you're going uh, and then make your drag uh, pass down the drag strip. Where would the smaller one be uh, better? No, a, a street application where you don't need that big a shot of fuel. You're just rolling on the freeway to get onto an on-ramp, um, you know, off of a stoplight to kind of hot rod it a little bit to the next one, whatever the case may be, that little bit longer duration to deliver that shot of fuel is what that means. So it's a very, very misunderstood thing. And I think we just always assume that the nozzle size means it's a bigger shot, and it's not. So those are the two real big points that I wanted to make here, but I wanted to prove it and not just tell you that, hey, that nozzle and that pump configuration only delivers about two and a half, three cc's of fuel. I wanted to actually test it, so I made this little rig, uh, made these little tubes to go onto the nozzle, and that way when we cycled the, the uh, accelerator and the throttle, that we would get the shot of fuel and then we could measure it and see how close we are. Now I think we're a little bit off, but that could be a little bit on the carburetor, but that's okay. Uh, the results are pretty close to what the math dictates. So let's take a look at the results and then we'll come back and wrap the whole thing up. Now let's talk about what I got here. So 
really the the cc's is something that we have to kind of take a little bit with a grain of salt uh, because i think there's a lot of little variables there that could be off i tried to make it as fair as possible uh, i tried to hit the throttle a couple of times after the the float and the throttle uh, area was or the accelerator pump area was full um, that way it could clear any air bubbles or whatever that may have got in there uh, and then a third shot and then i'd take the weight the the rating number is what mathematically I came up with. Now, how did I come up with that? The rating is based on the diameter of the accelerator pump well and the length of the stroke. Now, the length of the strokes are different. Obviously, we've talked a little bit about that in the past, that when you want a little bit bigger shot of fuel, you put the accelerator pump rod in the closest hole to the pivot point that will give you a longer range of motion a little bit bigger shot of fuel so when you do that and you measure that that 0.811 uh, i think is the measurement i have to go back and look at my notes and then you measure the length of the stroke uh which i think is around 1.1 one eight one point two zero something like that centimeters it gives you the rating of that 39 cc's that i came up with the short stroke or excuse me the the shorter stroke uh in the bottom hole would be around 25 cc's now i, I think that's fairly close there may be some decimals in there that i left out maybe 25.3 or you know 39.1 i don't know but it's a rounded number it'll it gives us a better uh, an okay understanding of what's going on here the cc's is what we're really thinking about here and looking at here and on a single stroke of the accelerator again after we cleared it kind of make it try to make it as fair as possible on the bottom position with the 24 nozzle 2.2 cc's was delivered on the 0.43 i'm gonna guess it was about the same again i'm i'm, I'm rough estimating that a little bit because i don't have a uh, a beaker that really measures that and it's kind of an eyeball so I'm kind of guessing a little bit there but I think that's fairly accurate and I think the math would probably play out to that uh, the volume should be around two and a half I think is the dimension there so we're close so we're within, we're within a margin of error let's call it that way but that's all the cc's of fuel that delivered that's an accurate depiction whether the measurement's correct or not whether I called this five or called it one or whatever it was the same and it's not 30 cc's i can tell you that or 39 or 25 whichever position that the the accelerator pump rod is in so again very 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 visual understanding now of what's happening same thing with the top position or the position that's closest to the pivot point that's what this side is here we got 3.6 and then uh, with the with the 043 uh, we're at 3.7 again I don't know what that is exactly supposed to be I think the math works out to 3.8 somewhere in there so again we're well within a, a, an acceptable margin of error I think so I, the whole thing is a really good exercise one to two to understand really that you're not getting a full shot of, of 30 cc's out of a out of a holly pump you're not getting a full 50 cc's out of the the big holly pump you're not getting a full 25 cc's of fluid every time you hit the gas that's important to know one just so you know understand the volume of it how it's rated and it just i think it's just a good visual it's a good understanding of of getting down a little bit more into the minutia and the math of what's going on with these carburetors that's what I like. That's what I like understanding because it gives me a better overall picture of what's happening with that carburetor. Now, will we ever use this in a real world application? Mm, that's debatable. I don't know that you're ever going to go, hey, look, you're only giving it 2.2 cc's of fuel every time you, uh, you know, hit the throttle lever. That's all. It's all. I guess it's something that's probably not needed really, but it's the understanding side of it and really that was just a a, a a visual explanation of it really what i the important thing about understanding this video is if that's rated at, at 30 cc's you are not getting a 30 cc shot and then also understanding that the nozzles are rated in time 
not in volume. So that's what I want you to take away from that is to remember those two things. This was just a an exercise to prove uh, those those pieces of the puzzle. So anyway, we could have measured the time on that. I think that would be a little bit more difficult because I'd had to get a consistent pull on the throttle shaft every time. But again, it's something that, that if I had a you know a couple thousand dollars worth of you know test equipment, maybe I could rig something to to give that a the same pull every time, and we could test what how much the length of time is on it. But that I don't care about. It's just understanding that. The smaller the number, the longer the time, the bigger the number, the shorter the time. So anyway, I know that was a lot to take in, but again, I think it was a good exercise just to, to make those two points about the nozzle size and then really how much cc's of fuel is actually making into the engine. And that if you got a 30 cc pump on your Holly carburetor, you're not getting a full 30 cc's of fuel. Good understanding of it, and I hope it makes your tuning process a little bit better. If you've got any questions about that, uh, whether it's on the Edelbrock carburetor, certainly I answer a lot of Holly questions as well, too. Don't hesitate, leave them down below. I'd be happy to answer them. And if you've got any questions on how I did the test, the results, uh, or why we have the number of nozzles that we have in those varying sizes and what that means, I'll try to answer those for you as well. So anyway, I hope you got something out. If you do, please leave me a thumbs up. Uh, YouTube likes that. I certainly... Uh, know that you guys are uh, digging what I do so I appreciate it and I guess we will uh, ugh. I usually hit the camera but oh well it should be good I'll catch you guys on the next one we'll see you